I think kids seem to be born with a pretty rampant desire to understand what's going on. You know, once our co cognitive faculties come online, we we find ourselves here and we start to ask questions. And that's that's actually fundamentally what I see. All the thing that links all this stuff that I talk about here comes down to a kind of question of like, what's going on? What's the situation here? Um, and I see that as a as a, a good um, way to cope with with the all the complexity of where we find ourselves. Um, if one just retreats into coping mechanisms, that's when we get ricocheting negative effects in the world. But if one just sits back and says, "Wait, what's going on here? You know, what is it to be a living creature? What is this consciousness thing? You know," and really just tries to see what's going on, that's um, that's a good way to get a handle on yourself as a system and then be able to kind of be a better system uh, in in the kind of world that we live in so i think the the way this kind of worldview you know where you describe it as kind of the universe looking at itself which is absolutely how i how i see it um i think this worldview i suspect is um would be a relatively a, a, a kind of equally healthy thing to teach a child than something like the kind of king the god king idea of some anthropomorphic king uh god that like has laws that we have to obey and, and those kinds of things um or the nihilistic scientific atheist you know kind of pure atheist worldview where it's where one takes all the you know the um the worldview comes out of the ego where it's life is meaningless and you die and that's scary, but you just have to deal with it. That stuff, you know, I think is not, is, you know, less correct than the universe looking at itself stuff because it involves abstractions and all abstractions and thoughts are moving, you know, moving away from the fact of the situation. Whereas when we say with the universe looking at ourselves, as I said in the start, we're using language to kind of point to something that's fundamentally just the true situation of, of the world. Um, but yeah, the questions is is extremely reasonable because for us as adults, it can produce really um, transcendent states, states that are kind of dizzying um, and can be kind of overwhelming, uh, especially for the ego. And for a child, they're trying to develop their ego. So I think the kind of um, pre-Christian pagan religions of Europe uh, and other kind of um, kind of indigenous traditions where there are ways in, you know in which people use awe and wonder at our situation as a kind of core part of kind of ritual those those kinds of things i think is, would be a wonderful way um kind of tradition to raise a child in um and so i don't see no problem you know this is kind of similar to scientists who like carl sagan or you know i think um, even richard dawkins had a book especially about how you know his his um his take isn't that the world is that there's no awe and mystery and, and wonder. And, you know, so there's this kind of hardline science view of, of awe as your religion, you're just like looking up at the stars could be your kind of that aspect of it. I see no problems with, and, you know, kids really embrace that stuff. Kids really want to know like what's going on with the stars, you know, what's our stories of species, what the hell is going on with, with ancient Egypt, you know, like all that stuff. Um, but the thing that you are referring to, if, um, I think the, the concern around when someone's developing their ego, do you really want them to be having experiences or, or dwelling on whether the ego is what they might think it is? It, obviously, side point, when I say having experiences, I clearly don't mean psychedelic experiences, but just, you know, meditation say. Um, so I, I do think that the conceptual framing of what's true, that like, if you know your origin story of the universe is there was some release of energy for some reason that we don't know why there's kind of deep mystery there as to what happened with the big bang and then there's this huge unfolding universe and we're a bit of it that's kind of you know the universe looking back at itself and it's a situation of awe and like privilege to be just to be able to exist right now and experience this i think that's a wonderful worldview and once they're a fully grown adult then meditation and Perhaps psychedelics if they so choose um could be wonderful ways to experientially drop into into this stuff but i think 
the conceptual framing, you're effectively just not lying to them or you're, you're trying to tell them what you honestly think is, is the situation. Um, and luckily, I think it's a really benevolent uh, situation.